There we go. All right, so uh, obviously uh, the spring majors announcement took place. Now, this did happen several days ago, so I'm sure by now uh, you have heard of this. But as far as the dates of the event, they have now officially been announced April 20th through April 23rd. Um, you got the qualifiers for it and everything. And then you got the international June 22nd through June 25th. So um, basically this this is Valve making a point to get these dates out ASAP. Um, this is definitely much, much ahead of time, much better than what the, apparently they've been doing in the past, including even the drama that we have with these Boston majors announcements that took place. Of course, it kind of caused some issues as far as, uh, as far as some events went. So, um, we see that here. It's good to see from Valve. Obviously, there, there isn't a whole lot of information just yet. But again, we, we do have at least the dates to know what we have to look forward to. So even as even as viewers and players and everything, you know, we can kind of block out that part of our schedule now, uh, knowing that uh, that, that is going to be coming up. So yeah, definitely props to Valve right there uh, for getting that date announced ASAP. I, I know you know, especially even working behind the scenes and stuff, uh, it definitely cannot be the, it's not the easiest thing to, you know, make sure all that's organized. Uh, not that I'm going to act like I know what it's like for Valve by any means, but I know even for Valve, I'm sure, you know, they, they really got to make sure a lot of things are set in stone before uh, they can go about announcing such things as that. But it's good to see that they were able to get things set in stone enough uh, to at least be confident to announce the dates there. So that's going to be happening. Uh, a couple of interesting stories here. Uh, DC, of course, DC, Digital Chaos here team that finished runner-up at uh, TI6, obviously, and they haven't really played a whole lot of matches. In fact, the only matches they've played so far have been in the elimination mode. We actually got to see them yesterday against uh, against Complexity, sure enough, where they did defeat them two games to one. Speaking of results right there, after losing 2-0 to... Uh, uh, who did they lose? They lost to NP, I believe, in the uh, in the first round, if I'm not mistaken, of that event. So, but again, they haven't been playing a whole lot. They actually just recently announced that they pulled out of the Montreal land. That's going to be coming up starting next week. I'm going to be going to that land, so I'll, I'm really looking forward to it, excited for it. I was a little disappointed to hear that DC uh, was pulled from the Montreal land. They actually got replaced by Team NP as a result of that. So, uh, you know, it's kind of one of those good and bad situations. Obviously, it sucks that DC is not going to be able to make it. I'm not even sure what exactly the reasons are. They, they were kind of broad, very broad reasons, uh, nothing very precise. But uh, in the end, they, uh, they obviously uh, – pulled out for whatever the reasons were. NP replaced them, so that took place there. Another another situation that took place for the uh, for the Montreal LAN, um, I'm trying to, you know, if, can I actually find that here? NAB Invitational. I think this is uh, what we're dealing with. Yeah, Ad Finum actually is also now going to the uh, to the, to the LAN here. Um, who did they replace? Who did Ad Finum replace? They replaced... It's one of the invite teams. I, you know, I'm blanking on who they actually replaced, but... Oh, they replaced Team Liquid. That's right. Yeah, Liquid apparently is going through some roster issues as well. So, uh, you now look at these. So, so you know, again, this is kind of... It's, it's, it's brought up a lot of discussion lately. This and, and something else I'll talk about in just a second right here. It's definitely been bringing out some discussions as far as the power that teams have and and how kind of that can screw over the organization sometimes with these events who are putting a lot of effort and time and money into making these events happen, getting announcements out and everything, only to have us uh, things change, such as teams not attending. You know, it, it is unfortunate, you know, but that is just part of the process, I guess. But so, you know, what essentially what before was Digital Chaos and Team Liquid going, neither one of those teams going now, NP going in place of Digital Chaos. Now, I think it's safe to say NP is a team that's kind of these up and coming, very hype teams. So I don't know if that's necessarily the biggest loss for the event. However, losing the runner up of Digital Chaos, you know, it does suck, no doubt. So um, I don't know if they're happy with that in the end or not, but it is what it is. And then you have Adfinum actually replacing Team Liquid. That's kind of the other one that's really interesting. The fact that they chose Adfinum as far as a replacement team, I'm sure had a lot to do with, you know, the event happens next week, and they only had so many limited options here as far as who was going to be able to attend the event. Uh, but Adfinum, this is another team that's been a lot of hype lately. They also just recently joined the Dream League as they replaced Navi, of course, who had dropped out. So Adfinum, they qualified for the Boston Majors. So, you know, they've been kind of getting a lot of hype here, being this Greek power team. Uh, so it's kind of fun to follow them. And I'm actually excited to, to see them at, uh, at, at the event uh, themselves. But, uh, yeah, Adfinum was a team that replaced Navi for Dream League over there. So... Uh, what's up to everyone tuning in chat right here? I see uh, P 
people uh, people tuning in. Uh, QB thinks just just to clarify on what you're talking about, the cast me cast me is something that's ongoing forever. That's not something that's ending. That that option that service is always there uh, for you to for you to check out. And if you want me to cast one of your games, you know you can check out that website right there. And obviously uh, you can get more information, and uh, you know you can uh, perhaps uh, perhaps purchase a uh, a casting opportunity. So up to you though. Anyways, going back to uh, to the daily breakdown here. Uh, another piece of news, Faceless actually replacing Fnatic in the Southeast Asian Dota Pit qualifiers. So uh, Dota Pit, of course, has been going on here. Uh, the qualifiers, that is, for all these regions. Team Faceless actually announced that they're going to be replacing Fnatic. I guess Fnatic also kind of a situation where they are going through some roster changes themselves. As a result, you know, we're not able to participate in this event. But Faceless, talk about a team that's looking so hot lately as far as their uh, success. And they're also good-looking guys. Um, they, of course, just went undefeated through the Boston Major Southeast Asian qualifiers. They qualify for the event as a result. They're going to be, no doubt, one of their favorite teams, I think you almost have to say, going into that event. I mean, not only because of their momentum, but, I mean, it's a team made up of obviously very familiar faces. It's not like these are completely unknown players. So it's going to be fun to see how they do there. As far as these Dota Pick qualifiers, you do see it looks like Mineski actually took them through a three-game series, but in the end, Faceless did win the series. In fact, Mineski even taken the first game right there. So that's their first loss for Team Faceless. I think ever. I mean, I guess when this team formed, they really formed with the Boston Majors, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm not 100% sure if they technically were undefeated up until that point. Yeah, it looks like uh, the TS6 qualifiers. Okay, they, they did play in that as well, and, you know, they did lose a game or two throughout that. So, yeah, they're not they're not undefeated throughout history here, but uh, they've all had very, very few losses, to say the least. Anyways, they're going to be playing MVP Phoenix in the winter bracket finals. I want to say that's pretty – well, I guess it just hasn't been scheduled yet. One of those situations are, again, a lot of scheduling conflicts going on with all these events. As MVP Phoenix took out Execration two games to nothing, that, in fact, happened earlier this morning, if I'm not mistaken. So all four teams are still in it, but obviously, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how that kind of plays out right there. Um, and then the last piece of big news here before, again, going into results – the Dream League event, speaking of that and teams changing, of course, the big news that happened, uh, I want to say a couple days ago now, NP officially announcing that they're dropping out of the Dream League. Um, now, this this has definitely brought up a lot of good discussion, I think, because the, the, the reason that they dropped out, frankly, I, I just think it's bullshit. I mean, uh, just, just to call it what it is, it's basically what it came down to, they were in a spot – within uh, their Dream League results so far where they weren't doing too well. The likelihood of them getting top four and actually qualifying for DreamHack with the matches they had left, left and everything like that uh, was pretty much not likely. I don't know if it was mathematically impossible, but from from my understanding, it was uh, it was unlikely. Um, I am the guy that was on Earth Hippo, a.k.a. Moonduck TV. Yes, that's the result of yesterday. Um, but... With them dropping out, they, they made these excuses then, like, oh, well, we're preparing for other lands and other events that are coming coming up. But, I mean, that that should be on you as a team to, to be able to manage all that shit. It shouldn't be on the organization for the separate tournament to constantly try to be catering uh, to, to you kind of having these fluctuations of up and downs, whether or not you really want to participate or whether or not, you know, you, you have time for it. And from my understanding, too, Team NP – Apparently, they almost they, they really made a point that they wanted to play in this event of Dream League, and as a result, you know, they ultimately got invited with some uh, with some last minute decisions uh, going out with other teams happening drop out before it started. But to kind of you know drop out just simply because they aren't doing too well, mixed with the idea that they're preparing for other events, it, it, it really is bullshit. I mean, again, this organization is putting a lot of effort, a lot of money, a lot of time into making sure that they can do what they can do to put on a great show for the people, for the fans, and also give an event opportunity for these teams. And you're, you're going to treat them like that. I, I just I hate seeing stuff like this. You know, being somebody that's been able to work behind the scenes as well and having to help coordinate and run set events, you know, sure, in a much smaller scale of a game, and Heroes of New Earth, but still, it's it's the idea that it's like, you know, it's if you want these opportunities of being able to make money for for playing video games, then you have to be able to give the respect that these organiz organizations deserve in return. You can't just treat them shit like shit like this, and I, I just hated seeing this. You know, it's one thing for all these teams to be dropping out because of roster issues and here and there, other excuses. I mean, 
Th this one, for some reason, just really irked me with Team NP, kind of dropping out when they did for these reasons. It was just, and because Dream League, they have this prestige of being a very well-ran event, very good people behind the scenes. You know, Dream Act, I've had the chance to work with Dream Act especially so many times. It, it just sucks that uh, that they were kind of, you know, they had to be put through this. And, and now it's a situation that's like, uh, well, so they just made MP 0-14. They gave all the teams auto wins against them. Um, and then I guess life moves on from there. But, uh, you know, it's it, it, you just kind of feel for the organizations. Uh, you kind of hope that uh, this event at least is able to finish somewhat smooth and then the DreamHack event itself is able to go off without a hitch and at least they have a good uh, event in the end there. But uh, speaking of that, going back to this real quickly, uh, you do see some results taking place. Uh, Ad Finum split the series yesterday against Vega 1-1, and then they lost 2-0 to Liquid. So Ad Finum... Uh, not having uh, the greatest success so far since they took over uh, for Navi here. They did split against Escape earlier on as well, but uh, they are in that lower portion, but still eligible. I mean, you see right now the only team to actually qualify with a uh, few days left. There's only three days in total, actually. Holy crap. Uh, left right here. We uh, we have Escape Gaming, the only team that's actually qualified. They're with 93 record currently, so they're going to be going to DreamHack Winter 2016. I'm sure they're really excited. I know Casey especially. You know, he always looks forward to that. Obviously, Arrow, a part of that team as well, I have history with. Uh, you know, definitely a fan of that event. So, uh, really excited for these guys, the fact that they qualified, and uh, especially, again, after their poor performance at the Boston qualifiers there. Um, it's probably got to feel good for them. But as far as these other teams, I mean, anyone is still eligible other than Team NP, of course, uh, to be moving on to the uh, the top four. So, it's going to be a tight, tight finish here. You see Imperial versus VP and Imperial versus Liquid going to be happening later on today. So, all right, that's the Dream League, a big event going on right now. We talked about the Dota Pig qualifiers, just to kind of go through that real quickly once again. Uh, we mentioned CIS. As far as uh, European qualifier number one, I think that still has to be played. Yeah, I don't know if this has been scheduled yet. November 21st, holy shit. Okay, so that's not going to happen for a while. The American qualifiers have been continuing. You do see Complexity did defeat Team Freedom 2 nothing last night. Uh, and then EG did defeat Team NP two games to one to move on. So EG it hasn't been the easiest road for them, but they are in the grand finals now. Uh, they play the winner of, of course, Complexity versus NP, which is set to happen later on today. And that's what I'm excited for. That's probably one that I'm going to have to watch myself. Uh, you know, maybe do some observing on the stream, uh, watch along with you guys. Not necessarily going to cast it. Uh, it is going to be casted, of course, over there by uh, Dota Pit official coverage uh, and everything. I don't want to step on toes or anything like that. So. But uh, perhaps watching it later on tonight, I'm excited for that. Anyways, uh, that's taking place. Uh, other than that, I think the other qualifiers, yeah, we mentioned the Southeast Asia and the Chinese, I think they finished. Yeah, Newbie is the team going uh, to Dota Pit as well. So you kind of look at the overview right now, uh, what we got right here. So we need three more teams uh, to qualify before the Dota Pit land is set to go, which, again, I believe takes place in the month of January, if I'm not mistaken there. Yeah, 120. 2017. Uh, elimination mode also going on, as we see here, uh, taking place. You know, again, I had a lot of fun on the cast yesterday. Got to cast Digital Chaos for some complexity, at least watch it, and also kind of be in between it and necessarily cast the actual games himself. But it was a lot of fun hanging out with the crew over there at Moonduck TV. Always a blast. And uh, Digital Chaos, though, they did take a 2-1. to one. Escape versus Liquid, I believe, is set to happen. Okay, it's not happening until tomorrow. I know they were talking about they're having a lot of scheduling issues. EG versus NP is happening actually very shortly here uh, for them, and it looks like Kai P versus OG is supposed to happen later on today. So they got the winter bracket portion uh, taking place, and again, it really the, the format of the event it definitely makes for some interesting stuff. So uh, you know, hopefully, this is able to kind of continue to move on without a hitch right here, as far as that event. And then the last one to talk about the ESL one qualifiers have continued to take place. Uh, you do have the European qualifiers right here. OG moving on as well as Fantastic Five taking out Imperial 2-1 yesterday. Um, and then you got the bottom part down here, Escape versus VP. And then, of course, Team Liquid versus Ad Finum, which actually happens tomorrow. So this event kind of getting closer and closer to starting to wrap up for the European qualifiers, at least. Uh, American, same deal. Yeah, Infamous beat Soggy Mitz yesterday. Soggy Mitz is actually up one nothing in this series. I was watching a little bit of it. Of course, that being Trout from Midor's team, so I always got, uh, you know, curious to see how he, he does with his team. But in the end, they, they fall to Infamous, who now is set to play Team NP. Uh, then Doo-Wop beat actually FDL there two games to one. And now Complexity will play Freedom again actually tomorrow now for this event here. So, of course, they defeated him in the Dota Pit event 
as of yesterday. So all these matches going on. Again, it's I actually sent out a tweet yesterday uh, suggesting that it's so weird being part of a community, this Dota 2 community, competitive community, where there's too many events going on, that teams are having to drop out of set of fans or not, you know, sign out for it or whatever because there's just so much going on. So, you know, I find that uh, I find that interesting, to say the least. So, anyways, guys, that's going to do it for the break, e uh, break CPK Daily Recap here. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, uh, again, this was on November 4th, 2016. Check out me on all my social media, uh, Twitch.tv, YouTube, and, of course, Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, for more information, look forward to the next recap. Going to be coming.